Filming underwater video has a lot of components to it, and keeping your video in focus with the proper depth of field by setting your camera's aperture properly is a key step. In this video, I'll break down how aperture affects your underwater video and how you can set it properly to get the look that you're going for in your underwater footage. Let's get into it. I'm Thomas Hughes, a professional scuba instructor, and on this channel, you'll see videos on scuba education, equipment, experiences, and environmental awareness. Just like setting the shutter speed and ISO on your camera, the aperture will affect the overall brightness and look of your footage. However, depending on the camera you're using, you may or may not be able to change the aperture. This means that understanding what the aperture does to your underwater video is even more important. Also, as a quick note, this video is gonna cover underwater video specifically. So if you're interested in how aperture can affect your underwater photography, leave a comment down below and let me know and I'll make a separate video about that. Okay, so what is the aperture? Well, the aperture itself is actually the little hole that's formed when you actually change the aperture setting on your camera. By changing the setting, the mechanical diaphragm, the little blades that open and close on the diaphragm itself, will actually form the aperture, which is the diameter of the hole between those blades. Maybe a quick analogy would be the aperture is like the pupil in your eyes and those will expand or contract based on the iris around it. So the iris being the colored part of your eyes as that contracts and shrinks the pupil down, that's gonna be a smaller aperture. And as it expands, that'll give you a bigger pupil or a bigger aperture. Now, continuing that analogy, if it's really bright outside, then our pupils will get really small because we're letting less light in so we don't damage our eyes or hurt our eyes, right? And and similarly, in the dark, our pupils get very big to let more light in. And it's the same for the aperture. If the aperture is wide open and very big, then more light will come into the camera, meaning it'll be a brighter video overall. And similarly, if our aperture is closed down very tightly, then there's gonna be less light coming into the video, which means our picture will be darker overall. So why is all of this important? Well, like I just said, because it changes the amount of light coming in, this is gonna be the brightness or the exposure of our overall video. However, this also changes the focus area or what's called the depth of field of our footage as well. When we say something has a shallow depth of field, that means that it's a very narrow focus area and there's only a small part of the image that's gonna actually be in focus when the rest of the image is gonna be blurry. We like to use shallow depths of field often for that cinematic look or like I'm doing right now with YouTube where the background is gonna be blurry but I'm in focus. So this is considered a shallow depth of field. For underwater video, this comes up a lot for macro shots, which are those really close up shots where you're getting in nice and close to a nudie branch or blennies or something like that, where you're so close to the footage, you wanna have maybe just part of the uh, animal or creature in focus, and then the rest of the background will be blurred out instead. Some cameras also have something called focus peaking, which is basically this highlight that will come around the object on your screen or on your monitor, and will actually show you which part of the image is in focus. So it's an easy way to key in to make sure that, yes, I do have the eyes in focus, or yes, I do have that nose and snout uh, and you know maybe a snoot light or something like that on there, and all that part is in focus. And I'm not focusing on maybe the fins and not the face of the fish or something like that. Now, unfortunately, I currently use a GoPro for my underwater footage and that does not have focus peaking and it also has what's known as a fixed aperture, but I'll talk about that a little bit more later. But again, this is why it's important to know what the aperture does because this will affect our footage overall and whether we can or can't set it, we need to know what's in focus and how that's gonna affect our footage. So if shallow depth of field means a really narrow focus area, a deeper depth of field or a deep depth of field is gonna mean a much wider focus area. And this is often used for landscape videography, maybe something with a, a time lapse or something like that, where you want the entire landscape in focus, not having just a section of it in focus. For us underwater, this will normally mean something like a wide angle shot of the reef where we really wanna have everything captured fully. And we're not just trying to focus in on a single subject within that reef. Because that focus plane is so large now in a deeper depth of field, it's a lot easier to keep things in focus because really the whole shot should be in focus rather than just that small area. Okay, so we understand why why aperture is important and what it is exactly, but how do we actually set our aperture? Well, like I said, GoPros unfortunately don't have a way to change the aperture and they have what's known as a fixed aperture. Depending on the camera you use, you may be able to change the aperture and most DSLRs will support this if you have them in housing. However, something like a cell phone with a cell phone case may or may not allow it. And again, GoPros
GoPros just have a fixed lens with no way to change that aperture at all. For any of the recent GoPro Hero series from at least the eight onwards, maybe maybe the six or seven as well, the aperture was a f2.8 prime lens, which basically means it's a fixed focal length and a fixed aperture of 2.8. Now, without getting too technical about this, if you can adjust it, I wanna tell you how you can set that f-stop, which is the f2.8 that we're referring to. When I say f-stop, f stands for focal length of the lens, and stop means how many levels of light are being stopped, which is a scale that's being used uh, all across photography and videography. To keep it super simple, when we say change the f-stop to set your aperture, what we're talking about is changing that diaphragm, which means we're actually changing the size of the hole or the aperture itself to make the image brighter or darker depending on which way we go. Because f-stop refers to how many stops of light or how much light is being stopped from hitting the sensor, lower numbers means that the aperture is wide open. So a low f-stop like f1.4 or f2.8 even means that that aperture is wide open and not stopping much light at all. So there is a lot of light coming in and the image is going to be much brighter. Now on the other hand, a higher number like f11 or f16 means that we have more of a closed aperture because we're stopping more light so we are closed down and making a much smaller aperture so less light is coming into the sensor so if you remember that f is f stops then we know that the higher the number the more light is being stopped and the lower the number the less light that's being stopped now i could probably make a whole separate video about lenses and go in depth about all the different numbers on a lens and what they mean and different tips about lenses as well but really for this video i just want to kind of cover two things about aperture and the lens itself in general you might have something called a prime lens or a variable lens a prime lens is going to have a f-stop number that will be constant regardless of the zoom level. So if you have a lens that zooms and it has just a single f-stop number as a prime lens, that means that that same focal length will apply no matter how far zoomed in you are. Now on the other side of things, a variable f-stop will mean you have a uh, variable aperture based on the zoom level. So it might say something like f1.4 to f 5.6 or something like that. So maybe as you zoom in completely, the f-stop value can only be constricted down so far, and that's due to the way that the lens is made. So more expensive prime lenses, especially prime lenses that have zoom, they'll have like, again, that consistent f-stop all the way through. So even if you're all the way zoomed in, you can still have that 1.4 aperture, for example. Because of that, they can be a lot more expensive as well. So depending on your needs, you may or may not need that type of lens. Now to determine what to actually set your aperture to, you're gonna wanna do a few things and to start with you can actually look online to see what your lens and camera perform best at. So each camera might have kind of a sweet spot on what it performs best at. And then for a lens, if it says it's a f1.4 lens, that's the most constricted it can be, but it might actually perform better at maybe f2 or f2.8. And you can find that out online usually, whether it's through forums or sometimes from the manufacturer as well. After you set your aperture based on what that manufacturer recommendation would be, you want to determine the look of your video. And if you want that to be the whole thing in focus or maybe just part of it, then you'll have to adjust from there. So as I said previously, the aperture controls how much light hits the sensor, which automatically means that we're controlling how bright or exposed or underexposed our video is going to be. If we have the look we're going for by setting the depth of field from that aperture properly, say we're doing a macro shot and we want to make sure that just that piece is in, in focus and not the rest of the image, we're going to have to adjust our exposure and brightness in other ways if we're a little bit too bright or too dark on the image. This means we're going to have to play with our camera's shutter speed and ISO to get the exposure dialed in perfectly. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, these are all part of the exposure triangle, and I'll happily explain those in these videos. Click or tap the screen now to check those out. With that, stay safe, have fun, and let's go diving.